Hello, my name is Benjamin Tinker. I'm the chiropractor of Vida Plana Chiropractic Center, and this is our general health talk. To get the most out of your chiropractic care, it is really important that you look after the other aspects of your health as well. It isn't difficult, but it does require a little bit of discipline. And the, the whole idea is, is that you're getting the best out of the chiropractic care that you can so that you can get better quicker and stay better for longer. Um, so let's just get straight started straight away. Here we're going to be drawing the temple of health. This is a really nice analogy with regards to um, looking after ourselves. There are different parts to looking af after our health and we can explain different bits and they're equally as important as the other one. So when we are talking about health, we have to first define health. Health, for this definition and for this video, is uh, not just absence of symptoms and absence of disease, but a fully functioning organism in the body. So it's when your body can deal with stresses from the outside. So if you're 100% healthy, you can walk into a hospital where there is a virus going around and your body is strong enough to deal with that virus. Health means that if you break your leg, your body is able to heal your leg properly and fully and create a strong bond between the bones and recover from that break. So an unhealthy person then, when they walk into a hospital, even though they have no symptoms, they're going to get the, the virus straight away. Um, and they're going to get the sickness just like everybody else in the hospital. An unhealthy person would break their leg and take years to get over it or never fully get over it um, just for that reason. So health in this definition is not just, ah, oh, yeah, I'm feeling healthy. No, it's when your body can deal with the stresses of life um, to its best ability. So how do we get there? What do we have to do every day to achieve proper function in the body? The first thing which is very important to be looking at is what we consume. So your diet or nutrition. So this will also include oxygen. It's very important to get outside, get some fresh air, clean your lungs, get um, also moving. This is very important. So uh, oxygen is very important for health, obviously. Um, I don't really have to speak too much about that, but the better the quality of the air, the better health which we're going to have. Nutrition is an interesting subject. Everyone has their own opinion on it, but basically, our bodies need certain things every day. Vitamins, minerals, supplements, proteins, fats, carbohydrates, every day to keep it going. Um, so if you find yourself having um, coffee and croissant for breakfast, pizza for lunch, pasta for dinner, you wake up the next day, you have croissant and toast with jam, then you have a sandwich with cheese, and then for dinner you have, um, I don't know, a hamburger from McDonald's. Your body has gone through two days, and let's add into that what we're drinking. So you're drinking coffee, you're drinking tea, you're drinking um, concentrate from concentrated juices, fruit juices, you're drinking energy drinks um, to pick yourself up and get more energy. Uh, you've gone two days then without any nutrition, any proper nutrition for your body, anything good. So your body stores with all the vitamins, all the minerals, all the good fats, all the good proteins, all the good calcium, all the good magnesium and what have you, is going to start depleting because your body has to now 
eliminate all of these toxins which you're putting in and you're not actually nourishing your body at all. So nutrition is very, very important for um, recovering when you're sick. Um, so if you've got the flu, um, vitamin C people normally take, but also just maybe a little bit of a fast, maybe just have some soups, some vegetable soup, um, take it easy on your, on your digestion so then you can rest. Also, just drink water. Uh, you don't need to have a special drink at every single meal. So a special drink is just anything other than water. You don't need to have a, a beer or a wine or a Coke or a um, juice. If you th even if you think it's healthy, well, it's fruit juice, it's healthy, it's orange juice, it's healthy. Well, it's better to eat an orange. You know, if you're juicing five oranges into a cup to get an orange juice, it's better to eat those five oranges. And I bet you can't eat five oranges. Um, so there's, there's, a, there's a big aspect there of um, just going back to the basics. Avoid special drinks. Um, especially ones which would cause inflammation, so Diet Coke or whatever it's called now, Coke Zero, or I don't know what it's called. Um, all diet drinks, all fizzy drinks. Um, coffee isn't a good one. Tea is also not good. But if you do have those, make sure that you're having enough water to hydrate you and that you're, eat you're consuming vitamins to replenish the the stores the the hormones which you're going to be burning out so um, caffeine stresses you out it's a false energy so it, it causes stress in your body and it boosts your energy by basically causing adre an, 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 an a, a adrenal response so a stress response it makes you stress it makes you more alert um, that's not healthy you're gonna to have to recover from that so to recover from that we need normally vitamin B to replenish the stress hormones which we've used and we've produced from having the coffee. So that's really important. Um, when we're talking about the back and nervous system, so that's back, neck and nervous system and brain and, and these functions, we're obviously looking at the bones, we're looking at the joints and we're looking at the nerves. So the bones are consisted of calcium and also lots of other minerals, magnesium, potassium, sodium, lots of other minerals. Our skeleton is a very big source, uh, a very, very big store, sorry, of these minerals. So where do we get calcium from? Not from milk, not from cheese. That's actually gonna deplete our calcium stores. When we're looking at people who consume the most amount of milk and dairy products, they have more osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is a lack of calcium in the bones. So that's important to avoid dairy. Um, the dairy company have done a very good marketing campaign to say that um, milk gives us calcium. Milk contains calcium, but we can't absorb it. And actually what it does is it produces um, an acidic environment in the blood and our bodies don't like that. So what it does is, our body does is it, um, depletes the calcium stores. It takes calcium from the bone and puts it into the blood to neutralize the acid in the blood because having acidic blood is definitely not a good thing. So dairy products, we're not gonna get calcium from dairy products. So where are we gonna get calcium from? Well, we can get calcium from lots of other foods. It's not okay to take a calcium supplement. So lots of um, new research which has been coming out is that people who take calcium supplements have a higher risk of heart disease, heart attacks, and heart uh, cardiovascular problems. So we don't recommend taking calcium supplements. Um, but it can be found, it's called bioavailable calcium in green vegetables, broccoli, uh, kale, spinach, so dark green vegetables, we're gonna be finding calcium in there. It's also available in meat sources, if you make a soup with bone broths, very much loss of calcium in there. So having all of that is gonna help out your bones. So we want strong, supple bones. Something um, while we're talking about the bones, which is really important, that if you do have osteoporosis and you do have problems um, with, with the quality of your bones and, or you're prone to fractures, um, it's very important that you use your bones. Just like you'd use a muscle to gain the strength of the muscle, you need to use your bones to gain the strength of the bone. So going for a walk, lifting some light weights, doing some um, small exercises. These, not from one day to the next, but over a period of time will actually make your bones stronger. So you can be taking all the calcium you want, having all the good things you want, but if you're not using your bones, 
they're not going to, your body's not going to be absorbing it and putting it on the bone. Um, if you've got severe osteoporosis, then we also recommend you see a medical doctor to get the appropriate medicine for that. So nutrition for the bones, mostly looking at calcium. Magnesium is also a big thing. Lots of people are deficient in magnesium. We do recommend magnesium supplementation. That is a very good thing um, for the bones, for the body, and not just for the bones, but for the general health as well. We don't normally find magnesium um, too much. You're gonna find that in seeds, you're gonna find that in berries, you're gonna find that in fruits. Um, but you would need, if you're already deficient in it, you're gonna to need to be eating an awful lot of that to get the stores back up again. So a supplement for at least a period of time, and then you can go on a maintenance of a good healthy diet of in, eating the seeds, which we've completely forgotten about. Um, seeds are very, very nutritious for us. Even the bitter seeds, they're very good for us. Um, they contain a lot of vitamins, they contain a lot of good fats and a good protein, so they're a very good source of energy. Um, so when you're having a, your salad, make sure you're throwing some seeds on it. Chia seeds, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, um, whatever. When you're eating an apple, uh, make sure that you consume the seeds as well. They contain very good minerals in there, which will uh, help your health. So joints. So when you have inflammation in a joint, when your bone is twisted, when you've got um, a sprain in your back, or you've got a vertebral subluxation in your back, or you've got a disc hernia, it becomes inflamed. So we want to be looking at nutritional things which can bring down the inflammation and also nutritional things which aren't pushing the inflammation up. So things which will bring the inflammation down are omega-3s. You've got to be careful here because when you go to a health food shop or you go to the pharmacy or you go to the supermarket and you're looking for your omega-3, you'll see omega-3 is 20 euros and you'll see Amiga 3, 6 and 9 it's 20 euros like, wow that's fantastic I'm gonna get the 3, 6 and 9 because I'm getting more for my money than just going for the Amiga 3 well Amiga 6 and 9 increases your inflammatory levels in the body so actually you're taking you're wanting to take Amiga 3 to lower the inflammation but you're actually neutralizing that effect of omega-3 by taking the 6 and 9 as well. So it's very important that you just take omega-3. Where are omega-3 found? In seeds, in linseeds for example, omega-3 is very, very much found in, in seeds, in nuts. It's also found in fish, krill, seafood, very high sources in krill, very high sources in fish, cod liver oil. These kind of things you can find high sources of omega-3 and everyone goes at this point well I have two or three servings of fish a day well if you're already deficient in omega-3 not a day sorry a week two or three servings of um, omega-3 a week um, if you have two or three servings of omega-3 fish a day you're probably all right but two or three servings a week is still not enough to get those omega-3 stores back high again um, it's not it's just not enough you to to just maintain a good amount of omega-3 in your body you're going to need about 800 milligrams a day of what's called the EPA and 500 milligrams of DHA and that's in a day so that's quite a hefty amount to maintain which you can do by consuming fish, but if you want to actually increase your, your omega-3 levels because you have very high inflammatory um, things going on in your body, well, you might want to even double that. When you're doubling a fish oil, you, want, you really want to make sure that it's purified or it's filtered to make sure that there's no toxins. Our seas, unfortunately, are very polluted um, and we don't want to be consuming a high... Um, amount of toxins in a, in a lot of fish oil if we're taking fish oil okay you can also find omega-3s in seeds so you would want an oil from a seed so linseed oil would also give you um, omega-3s as well in the diet okay these are called essential fatty acids they're something which we have to consume our bodies can't make it itself so omega-3s omega-3s um, so if we're talking bones 
joints and also the nerves, omega-3s are very good um, for our nervous system. So omega-3s are good for the IQ, keeping the memory, um, and lots of other things um, with regards to the nervous system as well. It feeds the nervous system. So going back to lowering the inflammation, you can also look at taking turmeric, uh, which is a, a root, a bit like ginger. It's yellow, it's used in spice, it's a spice, used in lots of Indian foods and it will lower the inflammation in your body. Lots of people take it as an anti-inflammatory in a pill form, and that will start to lower the inflammation levels in the body. Um, you could also have by the root, the turmeric root, and you can chop it up, stick it in a cup of, in, in, with hot water, uh, maybe put a little bit of honey in there, peppercorns, have a nice um, infusion. There are other ways to get the um, inflammation down, but those two are very, very potent. The other, the other thing is to just make sure that you're definitely not consuming things which are going to be boosting the um, inflammation levels through the roof. So alcohol is one which is very bad. When you have alcohol, your infl inflammatory levels are going to go very high. Um, so lowering alcohol to a minimum or stopping drinking alcohol, especially in the very beginning of chiropractic care, because when we're working on these inflamed areas in the, in the spine, there is a likelihood that it's just going to inflame a little bit more. So you definitely don't want it to be shooting up um, with regards to the inflammation. Alcohol, very bad. All fizzy drinks, again, bad. Sugar, bad. Sweets, bad. Chemicals, bad. So the, even the chemicals which we spray on uh, to clean our bathrooms, our kitchens, um, wash our clothes, our bed sheets, make sure that you're using either less or you change it to a, something which is, is um, more organic. It doesn't have so many harsh chemicals in because all these little attacks on our body increase the amount of inflammation in our body and can cause undue uh, or unnecessary pain and suffering just for um, little silly things like that. So that's really important. So. Um, if you are used to having lots of fizzy drinks and lots of coffee and lots of alcohol and you're cutting that back, you might want to be taking a vitamin B supplement just to replenish the stores, your stress hormones and all of that. You'll be able to sleep better at night time. Um, so vitamin B might be an option for you to, to help recover those stores, get your body back functioning again so that you can um, get back to health. So that covers a lot of nutrition. Obviously, there's a lot more. Um, with regards to nutrition. We can talk all weekend about that. You can, I'm sure, find other things online as well. Maybe we'll make a new video one day about nutrition. So all the different aspects and different philosophies and ideas about nutrition as well. So um, another thing which we should be doing on a daily basis to maintain the function of our body and to maintain health, to keep our body strong, is exercise. So exercise is extremely important with regards to looking after your spine and looking after the spinal problems and getting better. So when we exercise, it's really important to understand that it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to take out a gym membership. If you're not motivated, I strongly recommend that you take out a gym membership, find a buddy, go to the gym and move lift some light weights, do some exercises to keep your bones strong and also to use your spine as best you can in the best way. When we're correcting the alignment of the spine, it's important that you're focusing on moving and practicing moving in that new position. Because if you don't, you're going to lose that quickly. So when we're making the alignment, and you're practicing moving in that good alignment, it is much easier to, for you to get better. It's much easier for me to make the next step. And it's also easier and quicker for the body to heal. Um, exercise is very, very important. It doesn't mean that you have to um, be lifting heavy weights. In fact, we probably don't recommend that in a lot of cases, but um, moving the body. That means 30 minutes walking a day at least. It means that you're doing the exercise which the chiropractor recommends you. Um, 
If the chiropractor recommends you to do three minutes exercise a day, do that. If he says five minutes, 20 minutes, do that. If he's saying every day, do it every day. If he's saying three times a week, do it three times a week. There's a reason why we say the frequency and the time of exercise. It's to judge how bad you are and to then make sure that you're always going in the right direction. You can definitely overdo it. So if we say every day, that doesn't mean two or three times a day. More is not necessarily better with regards to exercise. Um, going back to um, the chiropractor's recommendations, if you are moving in, and you're moving your spine in different directions and you're realizing, wow, when I move it in, in a certain direction, that's causing a lot of pain and, and it really hurts me when I do that. Well, that's a clever response from your body to tell you not to do that. I need to know, we need to know that that is hurting you so then we can recommend you to do a different exercise or adapt that same exercise so it doesn't hurt you. Exercise is important. It's really important that you don't just decide yourself, well, you know what, I'm not going to do it. Because what we see in the long run is that the people who neglect to do their exercises, and again, it might just be three minutes a day, but these people who take their own decision, they say, look, I'm not going to do it. Um, I don't think it's of any benefit. They respond not just slower um, to chiropractic care, but they also have relapses after they're finished. So it might take, instead of taking three months to get better, it might take five, six months to get them better. Um, and then when they are better, they, we might see them in another six months time with a similar problem because their spine has not healed properly. It's very important that you're um, practicing the movement of the new position. Also, exercise is very important for general health for many, very many other reasons, for um, keeping your blood flowing, keeping high amounts of oxygen in your body, um, joints supple, muscles strong, bones strong, discs supple. The, um, the other flip side to exercise is stretching. Um, stretching is very important. Sometimes you have to be coached on stretching because if you find yourself in a funny position that can cause you harm. Uh, there's something called yin yoga, which I think is very beneficial for the joints. Yin yoga. Um, it's very beneficial for the joints, the muscles, the fascia. It gets, it's a very deep stretch. Um, but if you're not flexible and you go to a yoga class where people have been going for eight years, you're going to hurt yourself. So it's really important to find out where you're at and then progress from there. So that's exercise, that's stretching. There is a real need for exercise. So don't just take it, um, take your own decision and say, look, I'm not doing anything. Unless we tell you to. There is, uh, let's, let's just back up there. It's really important to know, this is a general video for people who don't have time to attend our, our class. Um, I don't know who's watching. I don't know how your spine is. If I have told you or your chiropractor or your specialist has told you, rest for a period of time, rest. That's also important. Your spine can be in a very bad state that it, you, you're just not going to be doing anything. That normally doesn't last a very long period of time, at least in my office. I'm saying maybe one, two, three days. To, to maybe a week, maximum two weeks. I don't think I've ever recommended anyone to rest more than two weeks um, from exercise. It would be very, very special case um, with regards to that, if it was. Um, it's very important to get moving again then afterwards, and we can coach you through that next bit, okay? So that's exercise. Other things we should be doing on a daily basis? And this is, this is all talking about the function of the body, the health. Um, we're looking to improve our health. The next most important thing um, with regards to looking after the spine, looking after the joints, the nerves, the discs, is rest. Proper rest. So this includes sleep. Going back to diet, the better your diet is, the less stimulants you have, the better you're going to rest. 
with regards to back problems, it is really important that you find your best rest position. And I don't care if it's arm above your head, slightly twisted to the side, if that's going to stop you from feeling pain um, and proper rest, that's what you're gonna have to do. Find that rest position. Pillow in between the legs, pillow under the knees, supporting the neck, putting the head slightly to the side, slightly to the other side, arm up, arms out. Whatever you need to do to get a proper good night's rest or to rest the nerve, that's what you've got to do. Your body is intelligent. It knows what position it should be in when it's resting. So you just have to find that position. Um, if you're finding it very hard to sleep, melatonin, so uh, a melatonin is a natural hormone which you can find in your health food shop. You can take that at nighttime and help you get into a deep sleep. If you're not resting properly and you're not recovering at nighttime, the process is gonna be slower. Make sure you're not having coffee after midday. Um, don't exercise too late in the day. Don't go to the gym at 11 o'clock at night. These things will wake you up. Don't eat after 8 p.m. It's a little bit hard here in Spain, but eat less food closer to your bedtime so that you can um, get a better quality, quality sleep. And when you are asleep, your uh, body is not focusing on digesting the food you've just had, but it's focusing on repairing the body. The rest also helps the mind, it helps your mood as well, but also um, when we're talking about rest, with regards to problems in the spine and in the neck, it means not doing things which hurt. You might be limping, and that's okay for a period of time to limp, to take the pressure off of, of your problem. If you're, when we're weighing you and you're weighing 10 kilos more on the left-hand side than the right-hand side, that's because your body's intelligent. It's throwing the weight off the problem. If you break your ankle, you've given crutches to, to avoid putting your weight through the leg. And that's okay if you're slightly to the side in what we call an antalgic position. That's also okay for just now. It obviously means that you have a problem which needs to be worked on, but it's okay. It means that your body is resting something going on on, on this side so that it can heal. Rest is very important. Some people get very good rest with four hours sleep at night time. Some people get very good rest with eight hours sleep at night time. If you're having to sleep anything more than 10 hours a day, on a regular basis, you have got something wrong with your nutrition or your exercise program. You shouldn't have to sleep more than 10 hours a day um, unless you have a really serious problem going on. You, if you're eating the right nutrition, you're exercising okay, you're gonna rest just fine. Um, six to eight hours a night is great. If you want to have a rest in the day as well, have a nap in the day, that's all right, but just make sure that you're not sitting down resting especially with a back problem if you uh, sit in a chair you're having to put all of your weight through your spine um, and then your spine is not properly resting so if you do want to have a nap go to bed lie down in bed and have a nap and don't have a three hour nap because then you're not going to be able to rest at night time properly night times when we get our really good healing when the melatonin kicks in and all those uh, hormones kick in the brain goes into a different uh, wave pattern and things heal Rest is very important. Other things which we have to do on a daily basis, let's just change my color back to blue again, is um, look after our emotions. Emotions. So we are, as humans, emotional. We are very emotional beings. If you're a taxi driver and you're sitting down a lot and you're in traffic all the time and you're, you have road rage, that is probably not the profession for you or you've got to change how you perceive the traffic. Um, looking after our emotions is very important for health. A negative thought we all have negative thoughts, and I'm not against negative thoughts. Negative thoughts can be very productive with regards to getting, um, changing your attitude or changing a lifestyle. Sometimes hitting a crisis point and just getting frustrated and angry is great energy to push through and make a change in your life. So I'm not against negative emotions, but when it's just a habit of constant negativity or 
you're in the wrong situation, you're in the wrong job. Sometimes we have to change that aspect of it. Now, I'm obviously some life situations, deaths in the family and friends, um, someone's moved away, um, different things bring up different emotions. That's a, that's a part of your life, and time can heal that as time goes on and conversing with people, not keeping it deep inside, conversing with people, allowing you to express your emotions, having a safe place for, for expressing that negativity is, is good for you. And it's actually uh, you know, taking weight off of your shoulders. It's taking a weight off of you when you can properly and fully express what's going on. Um, positivity, on the other hand, positivity is great as well. Um, positivity for the body and positive emotions are very good when you're coming in here you're going to find that i'm normally always positive i'm, I'm not normally telling you off um, i'm trying to encourage you to to go forward with regards to um, nutrition exercise your chiropractic care i'm not normally negative um, so the research studies which have been done with regards to emotions show that a negative thought or a very stressed thought even a baby crying or a car crash these invoke a physiological response in the body, which is a, which is a change in the, how the body works on the inside. Your blood pressure goes up, your heart um, changes its rhythm. The hormones which we find in your blood are different instantly. So our brains perceive the environment, and if we're seeing that the environment is stressful and bad all the time, then our bodies are going to be stressful and bad all the time. There are healing hormones in the body good things for the body, for the body to recover. But there are things which will suppress that and the stress hormones will just stop healing altogether. So it's very important that we're looking and controlling the emotions. In my office, the negative people who come in um, and the negative people are looking, they're in this, normally they're in this doctor-patient relationship. They feel that they have to have a problem when they come here. Uh, they're oh, you know, no, it really hurts today and this and that. I was fine for the last three weeks, but today is really bad. I had my appointment. I'm really glad I'm coming in. But, oh, you know what? You don't have to come in here with all of that um, negative thoughts. You don't have to come here because you're trained to go to a doctor with a problem. So this person will always develop a problem so that they can see someone about it. So uh, flicking that switch, just um, I always think, what next? What next? Now I'm feeling a little bit better. What next? Now, um, with regards to my patients, okay, they're here. What next? What, what next do we have to do to get them there? So it might be quitting smoking. It might be going um, go-karting. It might be doing some exercise. It might be changing something in the diet. Um, always what next? This what next approach, as long as it's not you know, really annoying and um, pushy is a very good thing to have. So what next? Think about it. Plan. Action. Plan. Action. And try to advance and go forwards. I don't want to have you here just because you have an appointment once a week or once a month that your body is flicking into this mode of, oh, I have all of these problems. I've got a wrist problem now. Now I've got an ankle problem. Now I've got a headache. Come in here with a positive approach that we're progressing with regards to health, taking pressure off of the nervous system, keeping the spine in a good condition. Um, that's why we're coming and that's why we're having the maintenance. That's what's really important. So the last thing, which is really quickly, we'll just quickly brush over this, is personal hygiene. Personal hygiene. Most people do this just fine. But it's really important that we're not bombarding our bodies with bacteria and viruses and fungus. And if you've got mold in your house and damp, these are situations which are very um, bad for the body and it's constantly having uh, to fight. It's like being attacked by an army of um, little bugs all the time. That's not good. When you're cooking your food, make sure that you separate cooked food from raw meats, um, these kind of things. We generally do very good with this. Bathing. So making sure that you're clean at nighttime after 
all of the day's work and pollution and touching people and stress and what have you, at night time is a very good time to cleanse yourself, get clean, have a shower, have a bath, relax, and make sure that when you're going in bed, everything's clean so that you're you're getting the best sleep, uh, uh, rest and sleep which you can, um, and you're not having to fight off a fungus which is growing on your walls, all that mildew because of all the the damp which there is, or you know you've come in from work, you're a builder, you're all dirty, you've breathed in a whole lot of dust, you just change your clothes and you go to bed. Now you're going to be sleeping with all that dust. Your body's going to have to take its energy and try to get rid of all of that constantly breathing in on the skin and what have you. So at night time, it's a very good idea. Get clean, get um, comfortable, and then you're going to get your proper rest. You're not going to have to be constantly trying to fight off these things. So um, we're very lucky now. We've got very good refrigeration. We've got freezers. Um, we've got a very good sanitary system. Um, just follow the rules. Just follow the general rules. And with regards to that, okay, so that's the health talk these are the things which you have to do normally on a daily basis it's recommended on a daily basis to help your body recover from spinal problems thank you for watching our general health talk i really hope it was helpful for you remember the five parts to health we have to do those things every day on a regular basis to get our proper healing in the body all of these advices uh, specifically for chiropractic patients and they're designed for for you to get better quicker to help get, give your body the building blocks help it relax and, um, and be more flexible be more strong so that when we're making these changes you can feel better for longer and be better for longer if you would like um, any further information you can visit our website just put it below here or our Facebook page and our Instagram. Um, you can please subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. We'll, we'll be uploading videos on a regular basis. Thank you again and we'll see you soon.